Hello and welcome back to the channel, my friends. Big news from Harley. Yeah, they announced the 2021 Sportster S, and uh, I think it's going to replace the old Sportster, and there's a lot to cover. I've got access to all the stats you want to know, so let's dig right in. First things first, that engine. Yep, 121 horses and 94 foot-pounds of torque out of a 1,250cc V-twin. It is closely related to the Revolution Max engine in the Pan America, but it's got a T designation. So I think that's for more touring or different tune, but it's liquid cooled, dual overhead cams, variable valve timing, and just like the Pan America, this is a stressed member of the chassis. So this bike does not have a traditional frame, which I think is pretty cool, but there you can see the belt. So it is a belt drive. And this bike has forward controls, big fat tires. This is a 17 inch front tire or front wheel and a 16 inch rear wheel, which if I'm not mistaken, lines up nicely with the sport bike crowd, don't you think? If you know any better than me, let me know in the comments below. And before I forget, I'm John, you're watching Road Reality. Don't forget to mash that like button and leave your old buddy John a subscription if you haven't already. If you have, thank you very much, I appreciate it. Let's get back to it. Another thing you notice here, LED lighting all the way around. How cool is that? Finally, welcome to the 21st century, Harley. Moving on down our list here, $14,999, which I think is kind of expensive, but I'm going to do a comparison here with the X Diablo in a minute, which uh, really makes it look not that expensive. Uh, note here, adding a color option adds $350 to the MSRP, so you'll be at $15,349. Next up, some of the chassis dimensions. It's 89 inches long, and it's got a stretch riding position, according to Harley. The cool thing for me is forward foot controls. That's how I like to ride. And a low seat height. Now, I looked it up. It says 28.9 inches, which doesn't seem so low until you take into account that this bike just isn't that wide. Given its narrowness, even for somebody who's 5'8 like me, shouldn't be too big of an issue to flat foot. And the next big thing, this is what I've wanted for a while, RDRS, Harley's Reflex Defensive Rider System, which has been a $995 option on the Touring models, is standard on this one. So if you took a grand off, now you're at 14. So starting to look like a pretty decent value. Another thing they announced, it has a four inch round TFT LCD display, yada yada. It's a round display that shows your tire pressures, ambient air temperature, speedometer, tachometer, all that stuff built into one. I like the round gauge. It's classic, but being an LCD, it's customizable. And I like that as well. So that's kind of old meets new. Another modern touch, rider modes. Hello. You got normal, sport, and rain, and a fourth custom one. So I looked it up, and you can change the power delivery, engine braking, cornering ABS, and cornering traction control settings in that custom mode. So you can tailor the ride to your liking, which is really cool. I like that quite a bit and wish my Street Glide had that. Uh, something else they mentioned is there's navigation, but it requires you to pair it with your phone and use the Harley Davidson app to show. So it's kind of like uh, CarPlay or Android Auto, where it'll take your phone navigation stuff and send some data to the screen there for turn-by-turn -turn navigation. Helpful somewhat, somewhat, not the best. We already went through the engine being a stressed member of the chassis, so it is a structural component. I like that a lot. It reduces weight. According to Harley, it'll ship at 486 pounds dry and 502 wet, full tank of fuel and everything, which is awesome. They also list out, you can make it your own. So I looked at the parts and accessories catalog over here. We've got all sorts of goodies from hand grips to covers. And then they have an alarm system you can add to it. Compact windshield, which I think will be real nice. Engine guards. And then uh, different more pegs and levers and covers and stuff. And then they've got a passenger seat as well. So apparently it only comes with the front seat, but you can get a tail bag or a back seat for your passenger. Not sure I'd want to do two up riding on this bike. And here's a huge upgrade that most of the Sportster riders I know complain about. There is a sixth gear finally. Thank you Harley for upgrading to a six speed transmission. But here's where things get a little 
iffy. Only 3.66 inches of ground clearance, which is not a lot. Even my street glide has 5.3 inches of ground clearance. I don't get that choice. It also limits the lean angle to 34 degrees left and right, which is listed in here somewhere. There we go. Yeah, 34 degrees, which is not a lot. Okay, that's straight up cruiser territory. If you want to compete with any kind of sport bikes, you need at least 40 to 45 degrees. But we will get back to that in a minute when I do a comparison. A claimed 49 miles per gallon, that's not half bad, actually. And even if I didn't mention it earlier, TPMS. You should always be checking your tires like once a week for their pressure, right? But having an onboard system do it for you, I like that. Help out with the T-clocks. So I'm not sure what this surcharge is, but freight is a little bit lower than the touring models and California emissions, of course, which gets me into this exhaust. So let's go back up and take a look at that. You can see here, it has a high mount exhaust, but it's better shown actually in this picture here. Uh, and they say that the catalytic converter is built into the muffler. Personally, I think that's gonna make exhaust systems expensive and harder to develop for this bike because normally you'd have a catalytic converter somewhere in the mid pipe, uh, but they, they moved it back there. Now, if you're, I'm not a sport bike guy really, but if you are, let me know in the comments below if that's common or uncommon for sport bikes to have the catalytic converter built into the muffler. Either way, that exhaust looks pretty sharp. As for colors, I've selected white, which personally is my favorite, but they also have a crimson red and black. And you notice you get these bronze accents on the engine and primary transmission and the tank, regardless of color. So overall, I think this is a very sleek looking bike. I think it harkens back to the XR1200 that they made a few years ago uh, with this tank design and the, the short tail on it. But I think it overall, it looks like a good bike. The, uh, the front here with the LED headlights, kind of like a fat bob or a street bob. And then it's just, it has a very compact look and feel to it. The round mirrors I could do without. They should be rectangular or, or kind of oval shaped. And the parts and accessories catalog shows that that's available. They're right here, the Wild One mirrors. Those I think would, would be a, a nice little upgrade, but it's got kind of a low handlebar here. So it's gonna have you in sort of an aggressive position with your butt back here and your feet up there. So you'll be, kind of be stretched out, but then leaned over a little bit. So I think it's gonna be a pretty comfortable riding position. I can't wait to test ride one of these. And we have brakes. Yeah, Harley doesn't really go into the brakes much, but you can see at least one disc front and rear. That's interesting, they only have the one brake rotor up front. You would expect to have two of them up there. That is a four piston caliper. So you've got a four piston caliper in the front and then a single piston caliper in the rear. So maybe it's got enough clamping force to slow this bike in a hurry. That would be nice. Something else that, uh, that they put in this bike is cruise control. Yes, it has cruise control which is a, a big sticking point for anybody that wants to ride a Sportster longer than a couple hundred miles in a day. I like that upgrade as well. Something I don't like, this tank. It looks good, but 3.1 gallons. So even if you're getting 49 miles per gallon, you're only gonna get about 150 miles, probably 135 is realistic, before you gotta fill up. And I guess your low fuel light will come on at about 110. So not a, not a touring bike by any stretch. So that's gonna wrap up our section on the Sportster S and its closest competitor that I could think of. And if you've got a better comparison, let me know in the comments below. I wanna know from you what you think is a better comparison than what I'm gonna compare it to now, which is, if you've been paying attention, the X Diavel from Ducati. You've got a 1,262cc engine, V-twin. It's liquid cooled. It puts out almost the same amount of torque. It's one foot pound lower, um, depending on where you buy it. So it could be the same or one pound lower, but it's got a lot more horsepower, 30 to 40 more, depending on emissions and, and what area of the world you are in to buy the bike. Other than that, Dimensionally, I think they're pretty close. Um, I couldn't find a wheelbase for the Sportster S, but I could find that this bike, the uh, X Diavel, has a 63 inch wheelbase, I believe it was. And it's got a 40 degree lean angle left and right, so much better there. The seat height is about an inch taller. 
The dry weight is within a pound. Yeah, there's your wheelbase, 63 inches. And it's got better brakes. It's got two in the front and one in the back. So it's gonna have better braking, but it also has more horsepower, so it's gonna be faster. Again, it's got LED lights. So I think it compares favorably. Um, it also has a bigger tank. And if we convert this 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers to MPGs, you get 43 miles per gallon, pretty much. So a little bit lower, but again, it's making more power. So even better there. But here's the kicker for the Diavel. It's 20 grand. So here you are. You got a $5,000 more expensive bike that arguably performs better handles better, has more power, but it costs more. So what are you willing to give up to get that Harley name or to get the Ducati name on the side of your bike? That's why I think this is a good comparison because they're sort of close in dimensions and power-ish. Okay, the Ducati gets the edge there. Realistically, for five grand, I'll take the Harley. If, you know, if it's close, I mean, I'm, I'm nowhere close to, uh, <laughs> I'm nowhere close to maxing out a Diablo. I have ridden an ex Diablo, and I rather enjoyed it. It was kind of an animal, and it was pretty wild to have your feet so far out forward and still just rocketing down the road. Fun bike. If you haven't ridden one, go ride one. If you have a better comparison for the Sports Duress, let me know in the comments below. Are you looking to buy one? Are you looking to test ride one? Do you think it's going to sell? Personally, uh, I, I think it is going to sell pretty well. I think it's a little expensive, and... You know, like they have the Iron 883, I think Harley needs to come out with the 975 version of what's in this bike and sell it for about 11 grand. And I think they might be closer in line with what competitors are selling because people are probably not going to cross shop this with an X-Diavel because they're Ducatistas. They want their X-Diavel. Whereas the Harley guys, obviously, we're going to want Harleys. But if Harley's trying to get a Conquest buyer from a Yamaha or Kawasaki leader bike, it's not going to happen. This is still a cruiser. So does this go up against the Rebel 1100? Let's take a look. So for the Rebel 1100, smaller engine, six-speed transmission, same as the Harley. It's got adjustable preload on the suspension. Tires are a little bit narrower in the front, same in the back. Bigger in the front, same in the back. Wheelbase is a few inches shorter. Seat height's an inch shorter. Almost the same weight, one pound higher. That's interesting. Almost the same uh, fuel capacity. But with that smaller engine, 87 horsepower out of the Rebel 1100. So really, it, um, it competes on like dimensionally, but not power-wise. So the Harley finds itself in a sweet spot for people that want more power, but not crazy power. And then it's also mid-price. So it's between the 9300 that Honda wants for the Rebel 1100 and the 20 that uh, Ducati wants for their X Diablo. Well, that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, mash that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I appreciate it. As always, keep the shiny side up. And hey, if you can think of a better comparison than the Harley to both the Rebel 1100 and the Ducati X Diablo, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video. Ta-da!